What's up, everybody? It's T.W. Chud, and I want to talk to you about the Note 9 after one year of me having it. A lot of people got the phone right when it came out. I didn't get it right when it came out. I got it about a month and a half after it was released, so this week marks one year I've had the phone. And I'm glad I waited to get it when it did come out because I was able to get it for $870 from T-Mobile and the price shot right back up to retail to full retail about two weeks after I got it. For that brief window, I was able to get the phone at a lower price. So I'm glad you know I got it when I did. A lot of you are wondering if it's worth upgrading to the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, which I have right here. So this is the Note 9, this is the Note 10 Plus. I'm gonna tell you right now, for me, the answer is yes, but for most people, I think the answer will be no. And I'm gonna explain why. First of all, this is one of the best phones Samsung has ever made. This is not only one of my favorite Note phones, it's one of my favorite Galaxy phones, it's one of my favorite phones, period. But there are some things that, for me, upgrading to the Note 10 Plus made it worth it. But for most people, like I said, I wouldn't recommend it, and here's why. I'm, of course, a YouTuber. I'm also an independent filmmaker. I travel a lot. I take a lot of photos. I go to a lot of live events. And if you saw my original Note 9 review, you would see that the thing that gravitated me towards this phone away from my S8 was that this had a telephoto lens. And I know to a lot of people that isn't a big feature, but I use it a lot. But then this summer, I went on a trip to Mexico and I found myself using my LG G8's wide angle camera like 90% of the time. As a matter of fact, I took the Note 9, I took the LG G8, and then I took my dedicated uh, stills camera, my Panasonic FC300, because it has a hell of a zoom on it. I was taking pictures with all three of them, but when I got back home, I realized I took about, I'd say, 80% of all my vacation photos from Mexico with the LG G8. So right there, I was like, wow, you know, this wide angle lens is the shit. And I'm gonna be honest with you, if it wasn't for the LG G8, there's a lot of photos I wouldn't have been able to get otherwise, especially in the places I was at. There was a lot of museums, a lot of temples, a lot of wide panorama stuff that, that yes, I could get good photos with this, but it wouldn't fit everything in. So the LG G8 made it very simple. And even my Panasonic FZ300, the lens is wide, but not that wide. Every one of these cameras has a different purpose. And in my toolkit, they all serve different needs. But for cell phone reasons, this is my phone. I don't have my SIM card in my G8. I have used it during the trip and, and other times here at home. But my SIM card basically stays in my Samsung Galaxy Note 9 because I love this phone. As a phone, as a productivity tool, this phone is the shit. And one year later, it still is. I'm the kind of guy though, I want it all, like Freddie Mercury, and I want it now. So, to solve the dilemma of, okay, how do I get the wide angle lens that the LG G8 has, which I love, but also the telephoto lens, which gravitated me towards this phone to begin with, but also this puppy right here, the S Pen. Something I have fell in love with, and I don't think I can rock another phone ever again without one. That's how much I, I like this thing. I use it for editing, my photos, my videos, for writing notes. I, I'm a writer, I love to write. So to me, it's not just like a whatever thing. It's not a gimmick. It's something I actually do use. I'm a note-taking motherfucker. And again, I, I'm a writer, I write. I write scripts. I, I write just for fun as a therapeutic process. Anyway, writing's my thing. So the note has been my shit. Like I'm sold on it. Also the S Pen that you can use to take a selfie. I used that a lot on the trip. When I got back home, the Note 10 and the Note 10 Plus was announced. And of course, they added uh, ultra wide angle lens just like they had on the S10 series phones. If you're in the market for a 2019 Samsung flagship phone, I would recommend, and you're, you, know, you don't care about the S Pen, you're not like me where you know it's something you know you're gonna use all the time, and it's like a whatever thing, go for the S10 Plus. Great phone, the prices come down, it, it has killer specs and in many ways is better than the Note 10 Plus, aside from the S Pen. It has things that even the Note 10 Plus doesn't have, like 
the headphone jack, and we're gonna get into that in a second. If a wide angle lens isn't important to you, and it might not be to some people, I would recommend the Samsung Galaxy Note 9. Because in my opinion, I believe this is gonna be the last true great Note phone, unless Samsung reverses some of his Apple S uh, fuckery that it's engaging in. But the way the high-end smartphone market is going, I, I don't know if they're gonna reverse courses. I don't know if the headphone jack is ever coming back. If you don't care about a wide angle lens, the Note 9, in my opinion, is the phone to get, especially now since it's selling from five to $700, depending on where you get it. It's obviously not retailing anymore for 1,000 like when it first came out. I would definitely get this phone. It's a beast. And compared to the 2019 specs in the Note 10 Plus, I honestly don't see a performance difference. The cameras are still 100%, especially night mode that they just added. Night mode is beast on this phone, like straight up. Like it, it took the camera to a whole nother level. The cameras were already boss on this, but having night mode opens up a whole world of possibilities for your photography. But there's nothing this phone doesn't do. It has everything. So let's talk about the differences between the two and why I recommend you to the average user, you probably shouldn't upgrade. But if you're like me and you have certain peculiar needs, then you might want to upgrade. The first thing I wanted to talk about is design. Obviously, this is a bigger phone. This is a 6.8 inch screen on the Note 10 Plus. This is a 6.4 inch screen on the Note 9. They're pretty much the same in the sense of their edge to edge screen displays with slim bezels. Of course, the Note 9 already has slim bezels, but the Note 10 Plus takes it even further. It truly does take it to infinity and beyond. The bezels are a lot thinner on the Note 10 Plus, so you're getting pretty much the same size phone, except with a bigger screen over here than over here. They're, they're both big phones, don't get me wrong, but they managed to fit a bigger screen real estate in the same body size as the Note 9, which is truly impressive. And as a matter of fact, the Note 10 Plus actually weighs a little less than the Note 9, and this has a bigger battery. So that's crazy. It's crazy how within a year, how much technology has uh, changed. They moved the power button, which used to be on the right side of the Note 9, moved it over to the left side of the Note 10 Plus. So now you have your volume rockers on the left side, as well as your power button slash Bixby button. So that's another thing. They eliminated the Bixby button on the Note 9, but they put it into the power button on the Note 10 Plus. And now you can totally disable the Bixby button, which I did because I never used it. It didn't annoy me the way some people talked about it. Like on the Note 9 was here and I rarely ever pressed it. I actually had it mapped to the Google APK camera which is pretty cool. I do kind of miss having that map, but whatever. I mean, it, it, it's not a big deal, but those are the design changes. I will say though, it has taken me several days to get used to having the power button on this side. I'm so used to having it over here. Um, I'm still not fully used to it, but I'm, I'm getting better. My, my motor memory still has me constantly reaching it for, for it over here. As you also know, this one's huge when it comes to design differences. They removed the headphone jack from the Note 9. So now you just have a USB type C and the S Pen, of course, your speaker grill. So now you gotta live the dongle life. It is what it is. I mean, I, I, I dreaded this day coming, but here we are. As far as design, well, that's pretty much it. The camera array, of course. On this one is horizontal, on this one is vertical. But Note 10 Plus has four cameras and technically there are three that you can actually use one is a depth sensor camera you have a regular lens telephoto lens and a super wide angle lens on this one you have a telephoto and a regular lens and then of course this has no punch hole in the screen and this has a punch hole cutout I'm not gonna lie I fucking love the screen on the note 9 I love that it doesn't have any kind of notch or hole or no pill shape design so that's a win for me with the Note 9 when it comes to the PPI display is even higher uh, this has a 516 ppi this has a 498 
but that's just splitting hairs. I mean, they're pretty much the same screen. They're, they're both bright and vivid. They're both Super AMOLED. They both pop and punch, and, and Samsung makes the best screens. I mean, they're both the shit. And watching content on any of them, playing games, it's going to be a pleasant experience. I'd pretty much say they're tied on this. It just depends on if you want a bigger screen, and it depends on if the punch hole bothers you. Of course, I have it uh, hidden right now with software, but even when it was on, it wasn't that big of a deal to me. If I had to pick a winner, I would say the Note 9 because it doesn't have any kind of holes. Also, the chin, the small chin on the bottom and the forehead on the top didn't bother me the way it bothers some people. So that's pretty much what it is when it comes to design and the differences. So that's that. Then when we get into hardware, we have this Snapdragon 845 on the Note 9. And then we have the Snapdragon 855 on the Note 10 Plus. This has six gigabytes of RAM. This has twice the amount of RAM, which is 12. This comes with 128 gigabytes of storage. This comes with 256. And day-to-day -day usage, going on social media, Instagram, Facebook, I don't, I don't see a fucking difference. Like performance-wise, they both operate the same to me. Even gaming, the, the Note 9 already handled gaming really well. You can edit on both phones watch YouTube. I really don't see any performance boost with the new processor over the last one. I mean, these phones are so powerful now that pretty much they can handle anything you can throw at them. If you buy any current flagship phone that's been released in the last few years, they can handle whatever you're throwing at them. I mean, there's still phones out there with four gigabytes of RAM. Like I said, this has six, this has 12. We're in the era of overkill, decadent. It just gives you bragging rights to be like, oh, I have a phone with 12 gigabytes of RAM. There's nothing I can possibly think of that you need 12 gigabytes of RAM, but whatever, it's it's nice to have it. Now the storage, I will say that is a plus for me because I do use a lot of storage. I'm a storage hog. And on my recent trip to Mexico, I actually packed this phone full of files. I had a 256 gigabyte card in my Note 9 and plus the onboard storage, which was 128. And during my trip, I pretty much packed it. I download a lot of movies on my phone. I download a lot of pornography on my phone. <laughs> Not gonna front. And I shoot a lot of 4K video. I, of course, take a lot of pictures. So on my trip, I had packed this phone damn near to the brim to where I had to unload stuff. There's people out there that will never use that amount of storage. I understand that. So for the average user, I'd say what the Note 9 is offering is more than enough, especially since as the SD card slot so you can add expandable storage and luckily the Note 10 Plus also has expandable storage unlike the smaller Note 10. It, with either one you can't go wrong but for most people the Note 9 is more than adequate. They both perform really well. I have no complaints about either one. They both get the job done and can pretty much handle whatever you throw at them. Now when it comes to software both the Galaxy Note 9 and the Galaxy Note 10 Plus are running both Android Pie with the Samsung One UI interface. So pretty much you're getting the same experience with, with both of them. I have mixed feelings on One UI. Overall, it's a good operating system and I, I like Samsung's ecosystem, but I liked it better with Oreo because with their One UI update, they killed Pro Video Mode in the native camera app. And I use that a lot. It's one of the reasons I had originally bought the Note 9 so that I could shoot professional video with my phone, with my $1,000 phone. And basically with the One UI update, they took away your ability to control all your manual settings in video mode. So you can no longer control ISO, uh, manual focus, exposure, all that stuff from within the, the video app. Uh, so now you have to use a third party app to be able to get those kind of results something like filmic pro or hedge cam open camera that type of thing and that sucks because i spent a lot of money on this phone and i expected to continue to have that feature and they took it away also they made using split screen mode a lot harder and they gave you this carousel mode which is how android pi is where you have a carousel mode just to go through your different tabs. I didn't like that at all. I like the list view a lot more. 
And then, like I said, the split screen stuff that One UI took away or, or made more difficult, you could actually fix that with this program called Goodlock, which has been a lifesaver. It allows you to use Samsung One UI on Android Pie, but bring back things like the task changer and the split screen mode the way it used to be on uh, Android Oreo. When it comes to cameras, which is one of the things that made me upgrade to the Note 10 Plus, is the wide angle lens. I understand for most people it wouldn't be, and you gotta ask yourself what you're getting your phone for, what are your needs? I can't tell you what your needs are, and my needs and your needs are different, of course, but for me, since in Mexico I ended up using my LG G8 for over 80% of my pictures, because of that wide angle lens, I wanted that implemented on my day-to-day -day phone. And since my Note is my day-to-day -day phone and my LG isn't, I use my LG G8 for filming my YouTube videos, which is what I'm using right now. I also use it for some other filmmaking projects I do because I love the manual camera modes on it. But for my day-to-day -day phone that I carry in my pocket, it's a Note. And that was my Note 9. But my Note 9 doesn't have a wide angle lens. And I know in my last video a year ago, when I first reviewed this phone, I ranted and raved about the telephoto lens and I still use it. But this has a telephoto lens as well, but now I also need a wide angle lens. So the Note 10 Plus is the only place I could go that also offers me an S Pen. I, I looked at the S10 Plus and I almost gravitated towards that, but after thinking about it and, and, and analyzing how much I actually do use the S Pen, the Note 10 Plus was the only place I could go because it gives me the usage of the pen, pen support, and it gives me use of the wide angle lens. Now, as far as specs go, the main camera sensor, to me, is the same. I know there's been a few software tweaks, but this thing, after the, the updates that they've given it in the last few months, uh, they even added night mode on this. The, the main lenses perform the same, and night mode on these cameras are beast. They're 100. The only thing, though, is night mode works on every one of the camera lenses on this phone. It works on the regular lens, the wide angle lens, and the telephoto. On here, night mode doesn't work with the tele telephoto lens, which really sucks. But other than that, though, the main lens, they both pretty much perform the same. They pretty much shoot video the same, just keeping it 100. So this is a good overall camera package. I will say, though, that the f-stop on the telephoto lens on here is lower than it is on here. Telephoto lens has a 2.1 f-stop on here and has a 2.4 on this one. And it makes a slight difference in low light. You get better performance with the telephoto here than you do here. So if, if you know that's important to you, and we're just talking like a smidgen of different. So if that's important to you, that might be worth the upgrade. But mainly the main upgrade here is that wide angle lens. Even the depth of field lens, to me, isn't that big of a deal. I mean, supposedly it makes portrait photos and life focus stuff look better, but in my experience, I don't really see a difference. To me, it's the wide angle lens. And Samsung has one of the widest lenses when it comes to cell phones. It's even wider than the one on my LG G8. So for me, that alone was worth the upgrade, that lens. I mean, cause there's shots that I couldn't have been able to get on my trip with my LG G8 if it didn't have that wide angle lens. Like none of my other cameras uh, could hold a candle to it. So that alone was worth it for me. I wanna be able to have that access to all three of those type of lenses in my pocket whenever I'm out and about. Um, one thing I will say though, the Note 9 wins over this camera on, and it's why I also was looking at the S10 Plus originally, is that the selfie camera is better on this phone in my opinion. Yes, it's eight megapixel on the Note 9 and it's 10 over here, but megapixels isn't everything. The f-stop on this is f1.7, so in low light you get way better performance on this than you do over here. This selfie camera has a f2.2 f-stop, whereas like I said, this one has a 1.7. So this, the Note 9, is better in low light on the selfie cam than it is over here. Yes, this has more megapixels, but between 8 and 10, I don't see much of a difference. This does win in the 4K department though, because it shoots 4K from the front camera. This one doesn't. I, I would go more with the low light though, because 
some of the photos in nighttime or the video with this doesn't look that great. It doesn't look horrible, but it doesn't look as good as this. So if I had to pick between the two, I'd rather pick this, even though it doesn't shoot a 4K on the front camera, over this one. Selfie camera is a win on the Note, but with the rear cameras, it's a win on the Note 10 Plus. Regardless though, the photos coming out of either one of these cameras, they're the shit. I know a lot of people say the Google Pixel or the iPhone takes better pictures, but all of that stuff's subjective. At this point, we're just nitpicking because all of these smartphones in the higher tier, even, even in the mid-range, are taking really good pictures. I remember when I got my first smartphone, the smartphones and, and cell phones first came out, I remember what the pictures looked like, especially in low light, coming out of those. So I appreciate the results that cameras like these are getting to where they've pretty much put point and shoot cameras out of business. But with any of these camera reviews, like basically at this point, we're just arguing, does this apple look redder than this one? Or does this orange in this scene look more orangey than the one in this shot? I mean, that's what we're arguing. Is this banana more yellow than the other one? Like, like that's pretty much what all camera reviews for these phones come down to. And sometimes this camera will do better than this one and this one will do better than that one. That's just how it is. But no matter what, you can't go wrong with either one. This has a 4300 milliamp battery. This has 4000. Honestly, I was getting better battery life on my Note 9 than my Note 10 Plus. Not to say the battery life is bad on this, but it's a little better on this one. I was getting 17 hours typically with this, 16, 17 hours. I even have gotten 24 hours of usage out of this. Whereas with this one, I'm clocking 15 to 13. Now, I think it's all a software thing though, because when I first got the Note 9, I was getting 13 to 15 hours. Then they did their one UI update and it got worse. But then recently it got better and I was clocking 17, 20 hours of battery time and now you know with this one out the box i'm getting pretty much what i used to get with this so it just depends what you're doing and the screen resolution on high definition fine high definition now i know you know a lot of people gave me shit on my last video my my no nine review where i had explained that you know i kept it on the middle resolution which is how the phone comes out of the box why would you not put it to its maximum setting well for me i've looked at both phones and I don't see the difference between quality. I mean, you'd really have to be pixel peeping to see the difference between this setting and this one. Like straight up, you, 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 I think you're bullshitting if you can see the difference, I don't. And it saves battery life by keeping it in that center setting. So I just keep it there. I'm not saying you have to do that, but for me, it gives me more battery time. So I just rock it like that. Of course, this comes with 15 watt charging and this comes with 25. This shit is fast. The charger out the box is way, way faster than this. I mean, this got fast charged, but I never felt it was super fast in charging it. But this thing is on steroids, and I, I can't believe they sell a 45 watt charger that's supposedly even faster. But for me, I'm not even gonna get the 45 watt charger. I'm happy with the 25 watt one that came out the box. Also, this has quick charge 3.0. This has 2.0 technology. As you see, both of the phones are pretty much same one thing I will say though on why I believe the note 9 is a better value than this phone unless you're bent on editing 4k video with the S Pen on this screen and, and, and taking photos with a wide-angle lens this phone has little things that this phone doesn't and it's why I believe this is gonna be the last true note phone unless Samsung changes course next year but this phone has things that this one doesn't have for example, like I already said, the headphone jack, the coveted headphone jack, it has the heart rate sensor, which I know a lot of people don't use. You access it through Samsung Health. I do use it. And I understand that to some people it's a gimmick, but it's a feature I actually enjoyed using. I know it's not for everyone, but I rocked it. Bada out. So that, that, there's no... Uh, there's no heart sensor on that one. No, you can't check your pulse or your blood pressure like you could with this one. And I, I use that feature. The headphone jack, I definitely use. 
And then of course another one which I know is a bummer to a lot of people, myself included, is there's no notification LED light. There was a LED light here, it's been on Samsung phones forever, which at a glance you know it would blink different colors depending on what your phone's telling you if it needed to be charged or if there's a new message it had that and that was a cool feature that is omitted now on the new phone also the fingerprint reader on this the capacitive fingerprint reader the OG type fingerprint reader it was faster on this phone I, I, I loved it I loved its placement I don't know it just felt more natural being on the back to where I could hit it with my index finger and it, it just did the trick it was fast uh, the end screen fingerprint reader on this, yeah, it's cool, but as you see, it's a Nomad, you gotta hit that shit at the right angle and press it down pretty hard. It's it's not like the end of the world, like some people make it to be, but it's not my favorite. I mean, I think it's better on the Note 9, so that's, that's a feature I, I would definitely give uh, points to the Note 9 for over this one. And of course, the Note 9 has an iris scanner, which the Note 10 Plus doesn't. What the fuck, Samson? So that's another feature that was omitted. So overall, if you don't have the same filmmaking needs that I do, I think the Note 9 is the better value. If you have a Note 9 and you don't give a fuck about a wide angle lens, that's not important to you. Because remember, the, the, the regular lens on here is already wide, but it's ultra wide on this. If you don't care about that, don't upgrade. Straight up. And if, you're, if you don't care about editing 4K video with KinaMaster, <laughs> don't upgrade. Because again, you can edit 4K video with this with Adobe Premiere Rush by Samson or with Cyberlink PowerDirect on here. So you could edit 4K video on here. It's just that KinaMaster can. So if you don't care about that, this is the phone. It's cheaper. If you have it already, I wouldn't upgrade. And if, you, if you're looking to get a Note phone, I would definitely go for this one. It's $700 brand new at most retail places, but you can get it as low as $500, $300, $400 if, if you buy used. Depends where you look for it. This to me is the last true great Note phone. It's the last of a dying breed. It's the last everything phone. It's the last Samsung Note everything phone. This on the other hand does make some improvement. But in some cases, one step forward, two steps backward. For me, I needed to edit 4K video, and my Note 9 couldn't with KinaMaster, which is the program I love. It's the program I paid for. I paid for a year, and I just love the way that app is laid out. And unfortunately, I found out that Samson put some kind of limitation on it to where the Snapdragon 845 for some reason can't handle editing 4K and exporting 4K with KineMaster. Now again, it can do it with Cyberlink PowerDirector and Adobe Rush, but not KineMaster. Sorry, the S9 and the S9 Plus, same thing online. If you look, uh, you'll see user complaints where they can't edit 4K video on this. And this is the program I like editing with and I like using the S Pen. So. I like this program, I like working with the S Pen, so the 855 handles it, like my LG G8 handles editing 4K files with this program, with this app, with no problem, and so this is the only place I could go. This is why I didn't go with the S10 Plus, because the S10 Plus has the 855, and it could have handled this, and has the headphone jack, but it doesn't have the motherfucking S Pen. So now I can finally edit my 4K videos on this gigantic screen using the S Pen and using the, the software app I like to use. So everyone's not gonna be in the same situation I'm in. Everyone is not gonna get a whole new freaking phone for $1,100 just to be able to edit 4K video on a goddamn app, this app in particular, and for a wide angle lens. But for me, that's really what it came down to. But for most people, if you have this phone, I keep it. It, it does everything you need it to do, and then some. And if you're looking to get a Note phone, I'd get this one. This is the everything phone. This is the phone that most people would be more than happy with. I mean, this this is a fantastic phone and I'm gonna miss this phone, I'm not gonna lie. There's things about this phone, the design, the performance, the features, like it had everything. The only thing it didn't have is the wide angle lens and, and the handicap of not being able to edit 4K video in KineMaster. So anyway, anyway, that's my one year review for the Note 9. 
I hope I was able to help you guys decide if you should upgrade or if you should stick with what you have. Obviously, this phone already cost a lot of money, even if you do get it for $400. I mean, we're at a point now where we're talking like three or $400 for a fucking phone isn't a lot of money. It's a lot of money. This all comes down to your, your needs, like what you're trying to do, what you're trying to accomplish on your phone. Like I said, my LG G8, that has a purpose. That's for filming things. It's a good phone, but it doesn't have S Pen. So... The Note has been my go-to everyday phone, or what folks call daily driver, I hate that term. The Note 10 Plus is gonna be my new phone. Thanks for watching, it's Teed Up to Chad. Coming straight from the underground. Peace. Catch you later. Don't pull the S Pen out unless you plan to rock on this thing. The Note 10 Plus over everything. Yeah, I know I'm a fool.